So uh, this uh, this came across. This was uh, came across on uh, actually through a Google alert, and we were actually notified by this by uh, one of our contacts at GSA regarding uh, GAO's uh, deep dive into the Buy American Act uh, and the associated FPDS and G reporting and the compliance with the act uh, based on uh, an audit they ran in December uh, last month. So uh, we, uh, the, the point here is to let's review what GAO found and, and uh, what lessons learned and we'll review what Fed Data Check, our product has in the way of uh, similar review of uh, compliance with BAA as reported in FPDS and G. <clears throat> okay, for an agenda, uh, we're going to look at, you know, how much spend are we talking about? You know, Buy American Act applies to, generally speaking, applies to, uh, as you know, uh, products, not services, but products manufactured in a foreign country. So how much of uh, federal spend is, is tied to that area? We're going to look at the three ways an award uh, would not be be uh, subject or would not require that a U.S. manufactured product be purchased to fulfill the contract requirements. What are the three categories of exceptions uh, not uh, where that would not apply? And I, we've broken them out. I've broken them out into not applicables, waivers, and exceptions. And we're going to go through what, what those are. Uh, in addition to uh, um, the spend analysis, we're going to review what GAO found in terms of its overall finding of BAA compliance uh, by the federal government, uh, specific errors uh, that they uncovered regarding uh, awards that did not adhere to the Buy American Act, and other FPDS and G and BAA issues. And we're going to go through our data checks number 125 and 126, where uh, Fed Data Check reviews all of the transactions in FPDS and G, at least all the civilian transactions, and flags those that appear to have, uh, have violated one or another aspect of BAA. All right, that's the agenda. Uh, the definitions, BAA uh, acronym, uh, DOD qualifying countries, that's going to come up. What does that mean when in the context of the Buy American Act? And that is, uh, it's, there's a, some DFARS references too that we're going to provide later, but this statutory reference, DOD has determined uh, it, it looks like a typo, it is in, determined it is inconsistent with the public interest to apply restrictions of the Buy American Statute or the Balance of Payments programs to the acquisition of qualifying country end products from the qualifying country. In other words, for DOD, let's see if we can pull that statute up. No, it wasn't a typo. DOD is determined, and there is no is, but DOD is determined it inconsistent with the public interest to apply the restrictions of the Buy American Act to the qualifying countries. And there's, there's a list of qualifying countries. In short, if DOD uh, is funding the award, uh, then uh, the requirements, uh, and they want to get the product from Denmark, uh, they have a blanket exception to the Buy American Act. Only applies to DOD, though. This uh, this term here, DOD qualifying countries. Nope, oh, I got a question here. I can. Uh, I think uh, Ted Net, if you could put in your pin there, I could unmute you. Uh, otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get you. You could type in your question in the chat. So I think I've sent you a, a, a pin number there. Okay.
uh, GR, that's just my abbreviation for the report we're talking about. It's the GAO report called the Buy American Act, Actions Needed to Improve Exception and Waiver Reporting and Selected Agency Guidance, GAO report, GAO-19-17. And uh, I'll send it to you tomorrow, but it's also in the handouts section. I think in your, your go-to webinar controls there, you should see a handout section and you can download both this PowerPoint and the GAO report there. Resale, when you, when you hear the term resale in our discussion today, uh, that's, that means for resale of an end product in a commissary, not, not like in a gift shop. You know, a military, a DOD commissary is what that is referring to. I believe Coast Guard also has commissaries. Uh, not, not general resale, specifically it's resale in a commissary. Here's one thing in the in a Buy American Act. This was, uh, as you may recall, uh, President Trump put out an executive order uh, either two years ago, I think it was, on the Buy American Act and didn't change anything, just saying it's important that agencies adhere to the act. And then James Brady, uh, in a background briefing, here's the link. He came up with this quote. The waivers and exemptions process in Buy American have been abused greatly. So he's making the assertion that, uh, uh, what's he saying there? Uh, CEOs and CSs uh, need to be paying closer attention to the restrictions on the Buy American Act. And, fulfilling the contracts and verifying that the contracts are fulfilled through U.S. Uh, made products. Okay, what? Uh, let's start out with a poll here. Um, and Let's see if that poll's coming through. It's distributing now. What countries have the highest spend of those polls must be closed to enable screen sharing? There we go. So does, so in other words, uh, does South Korea, do, do, does the United States buy more foreign and foreign made products from South Korea or Greece? for example. Looks like just about everyone has, has opened up. Uh, I guess I cannot send it. Okay. Let's see. Let's close it. And it was the first one was uh, was the correct answer. Let's take a look at that in the GAO report. So they do have something at the bottom here where they Okay. Federal government procurement of foreign end products by country. Over five hundred million was South Korea. That, that was surprising to me. South Korea, United Kingdom, Afghanistan, and Canada. South Korea, wow. I wonder what the heck we're buying from them. Um, so that was, that was, uh, so it was South Korea one and then Mexico, which kind of makes sense to me, Canada and Mexico, of course, two, I believe uh, two of the two biggest U S trading partners are at, are at the high end. Uh, and then Greece 
is ahead of Sweden. I didn't wouldn't have thought of that. I would have. I don't. So some interesting uh, things there, you know. Uh, To, let's see. Ah, anyway, uh, it's just an interesting analysis that you wouldn't have thought of. Um, and most of you got it right. Let's do one other poll while we're, while we're at it. Uh, you already, I already, I believe the answer on that one. Here's an interesting one. We'll, we'll get our polls out of the way right at the beginning here. So the idea is, uh, if you look at these, like these are all of the WTO and free trade agreement countries right there are in this brown. So you got the uh, Mexican free trade agreement, of course, the NAFTA, uh, in terms of WG. TO, World Trade Organization, New Zealand over here, a lot of European countries, South America, I know, had a big trade agreement with us. But my question there is, what one, what one, name a country that is not covered by a free trade agreement, World Trade Organization, South American one, NAFTA, but is one of those DOD countries that, that they've made in, made in a blanket exception to the Buy American Act. So DOD can buy from this country uh, without adhering to the restrictions in DAA. Okay. We'll close that one. And the answer is Egypt. So if you look at this here, DOD qualifying countries, it's in light blue. It's Egypt and up here is Turkey. So those are the only two countries that uh, are not covered by any free trade agreement, but they they do get an ex uh, exemption from BAA uh, for DOD spend. Okay, what, uh, well, actually, let's pull back up that. What, well, let's review this to actually here first. What did, what did GAO find? Remember that quote, that previous quote in terms of from uh, Buy American Act, the uh, exceptions and the waivers have been abused greatly. Is that what he said? Waivers and exemptions have been, been abused greatly. Well, you know, one of the things there is the uh, the percentage of spend is tiny. So if you look at the BA, BA non-DOD exceptions, such as non-availability, we bought it from uh, Mexico. Why? It wasn't available in the United States. There were no manufacturers in the United States. That would be a BAA exception uh, or through the trade agreements uh, act. Uh, it's only 0.6% of the spend on end products, 1.25 billion, according to the GAO report. Uh, now the DOD, we talked about the DOD uh, has determined that it's not in, not in, not in their interest uh, to abide by the BAA for qualifying countries. That's a, that's a higher spend, that's 2.9 billion. In the total spend on foreign end products, as we'll see, and recall the number is 136 billion. Uh, now, this is a common sense uh, exception of the Buy American Act. It was manufactured outside the U.S. for use outside the U.S. Built in an embassy in Cuba. I know that that's come up. Uh, you know, where are you going to get your concrete? You're going to buy it from a local supply, supplier in Cuba. Uh, although, actually, construction materials can, I think, have some additional requirements but uh you know obviously you got a military base or you got something else or an embassy outside uh the united states you're not going to be shipping in the products from the united states often 
So that's an exception. That's 3.7 billion. And another one that's where BAA is not applicable if this buy is less than or equal to the micro purchase threshold, total micro purchase threshold spend is 9 million. So it's not, not even a rounding error. I looked at the GAO numbers and compared to what's in FPDS and G now, uh, and uh, the numbers are close, but not exact. So in other words, if you ran uh, the DOD exception for qualified countries for FY17, it would be close to 2.9 billion, but not on the money. FPDS and G is changing all the time. Maybe when they ran it, you know, some additional transactions had trickled in. And uh, GAO concluded that the FPDS and G data is reliable, but not exact in determining what is the actual spend on foreign products through, through acquisition. Reliable, but not, not to the penny. All right, to, um, Here's the waivers and exceptions is how uh, the GAO report and, and other analysis I've read has, has breaks out the reasons why uh, you are you being a contracting officer, contracting specialist are justified in awarding a contract to a vendor who's going to uh, fulfill the contract through a product manufactured outside the United States foreign made product. I also added a not applicable category. So when is it when is it not applicable? When is when do you uh, you as a contracting official need not be concerned uh, that the uh, product uh, is a foreign product or manufactured outside the US for use outside the US. You can look at FAR 25100B. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, I have to, you know, I, you always, there's a thousand and one, not a thousand, but a lot of caveats and distinctions you can make. Like one I'm thinking now, we'll read the exception. We, you can't buy it from uh, North Korea. That's covered by something else. 25100B, let's take a look at that. 25100B. It applies to supplies acquired for use in the United States, including supplies. Oh, looks like I got the wrong manufacturer outside the use. 100B. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that one. Looks like I got a, a wrong reference. Exceptions. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to have to look at that. Maybe I don't know how I got that wrong. Uh, purchases at or below the micro purchase threshold, B1. So the Buy American Act, uh, if you look at this, Buy American Act applies uh, hmm. here's where that uh, exceeds the micro purchase threshold. All right, those are not uh, very good references. Uh, so I'm gonna have to, to work on that. But anyway, um, Manufactured outside the U.S. for use outside the U.S., purchases at or below the micro purchase threshold are not subject to the Buy American Act. 
That's also in the report. Uh, let's pull up the report there. There we go. This is similar. This, this is off the GAO report. This is similar to other circumstances where the Buy American restrictions do not apply, such as acquisitions for pro, of products for use outside the United States or contracts valued below the micro purchase threshold. So there's a pretty good quote, even though my uh, backing these two statements up. Uh, Buy American Act does not apply in those two cases. All right, uh, let's talk about the next one, a waiver, waivers, it's all called. Trade Agreements Act. Offers of eligible products receive equal consideration with domestic offers, bar 25402A. Yeah, no, no. Getting nervous about that one. Let's see if I can find 25402A. Uh, trade agreements. Act offers of eligible products receive equal consideration with domestic offers. So, uh, you know, if you if you put out a, a, a solicitation for automobiles. Um, the manufacturer in Germany, let's just say hypothetically BMW, has to be treated the same as Ford or Chrysler manufacturing in this country, assuming it, it meets the threshold in WTO, which is 180000 And we'll talk about what that dollar threshold means. So that's what that trade agreement applies. Yes, you know, sure, we want to emphasize uh, buying products made in the United States. But if the country is part of a trade agreement, they get to be treated the same as everybody else if uh, it meets the dollar threshold test. Any questions or comments so far? Okay. Uh, then, then there are five, so we've talked about not applicable, we've talked about waivers, now here are the exceptions to the Buy American Act, which means uh, if they're, if they're, well, let's go through what those are. Domestic non-availability. Um, and you can, better yet, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the FPDSNG data dictionary and go through those there. And this is what you would pick in field 9H. So we've gone through already talking about 9H is the place of manufacture, represents whether the end products procured by the contract are manufactured inside or outside the United States in accordance with the Buy American Act. We've already gone through two non applicables, performed or manufactured outside the US for use outside the U.S. That would be E. Another not applicable, which isn't listed here, which is one of the things that's covered in the GAO report, is that the award was uh, not competed because it was under the micro-purchase threshold. Buy American Act is not applicable then. And we talked about waivers. This would be all of the Trade Agreement Act waivers. So... Uh, yes, I want, yes, I'm sure we want to buy the cars for many American manufacturers, but the Trade Agreement Act says, uh, in our case, Germany is the same as the United States, so that would be a waiver. That would be G. So now we're going to go through the five exceptions. Uh, domestic non-availability. Let me just go through 
here? I'm going to say five exceptions. So is it five or six? That's a good question. There's the resale. I bought the manufactured product, but I'm going to resell it in the uh, Department of Defense commissary. Buy American Act doesn't apply. Exception number one. Exception number two, commercial information technology. You're buying an IT product. You don't have to, you need not concern yourself whether uh, the manufacturer of that soft IT, commercial IT product was an American manufacturer or not. Now, I was, I'm not counting the, the North Korea and the China exceptions there either. You can, that would be another layer of complexity. Commercial IT has a blanket exception to BAA. Reselling the commissary, commercial IT, public interest. Uh, that was a DOD, quali uh, DOD qualifying country. The Department of Defense has made a blanket public interest exception that, hey, if we're buying, uh, buying a manufactured end product from Egypt, uh, it's not in the public interest, the United States public interest, uh, to apply the BAA restrictions to that spend. That's exception number three, which is going to actually, that's going to be related to this one. Okay, exception number four, non-availability. That makes sense. Yeah, we yeah we didn't buy it from an American manufacturer. Why? No one, no one here makes it. That's four, and three is unreasonable cost, which is in here somewhere. There it is. Four, five, resale. Exception number one, blanket IT. Exception number two, public interest. Exception number three, no one's making it. Non availability. Exception four, unreasonable cost. Five. And this is a subset of this. So when the DOD said we're not applying BAA because it's a qualifying country, that was a public interest determination. So all of those exceptions listed under L is a subset. They break it out, but it's it's a subset of I. That's why when you read through the GAO report and other analysis of the Buy American Act, they're not going to list six exceptions. Domestic non-availability, IT, resale, unreasonable cost, public interest, and qualifying country. They only say five. That's because this one here is a subset of that. All right, what else did the GAO find in this, this report here? What was their key overall finding? This is the one we're talking about. This is the report right here. And they did this report at the request of Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut. That's why the GAO did this audit. What was their key overall finding? FPDSNG is the primary means for capturing procurement data regarding the Buy American Act, but we found that agencies may not always input reliable information on the extent to which exceptions or waivers authorize the acquisition of foreign end products. In addition, some aspects of how FPDSNG is structured could lead to additional data errors. It's on page 16 of the report. That's GR is my um, acronym or the GAO report we're talking about. So they found some problems with how uh, agencies applied those five exceptions we just went through. Waivers, that's the Trade Agreement Act waivers. Uh, I don't, you know, it seems to me like it's the Trade Agreement Act waiver, singular, not plural. But what they mean by that is it's the waiver associated with WTO, World Trade, World Trade Organization, Free Trade Agreement, the waiver associated with the Israeli Free Trade Agreement, the waiver associated with NAFTA. That's how they get waivers. While it's, it's waivers plural, and then all, all those waivers tie back to the Trade Agreement Act. Okay, here we go. So let's look at some specifics now. Uh, when so when the BAA is saying they did not always input reliable information on the extent to which exceptions or waivers authorized, were authorized, what do they mean by that? Uh, 
Okay, incorrectly applied a Trade Agreement Act waiver. More than, this is a quote out of the report, more than 5% of contract obligations reported for trade agreement waivers were for awards set aside for small businesses, which would not be eligible under the TAA. Let's take a look at that in the report, page 17. Further, <clears throat> here it is here. So what they're saying in this report was uh, they found more than 5% for fiscal year 2017 data we reviewed. For those, for the contracts they reviewed, uh, more than 5% of contract obligations reported for trade agreement waivers were awards for small, set aside for small businesses, which would, which would not be eligible under the Trade Agreements Act. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so that's an FY17 award by NIST uh, under commerce. And if I scroll down to the place of manufacture, where wh what were they buying? They were buying electrical connectors. And they said, look, look, we bought it from Japan and we're citing trade agreement authority. We did not use American manufacturer. Why? Uh, we were obligated to is really what they're saying, or uh, we, we had to treat this Japan vendor the same as a U.S. vendor through a trade agreement, and that's why we bought it from, from them. We bought it from Santec USA. And they used a small business set-aside. It's not allowed. You know, the acquisition. One, one, you read that in the GAO report, but if I go to 25401, uh, if you look at 25400, that's trade agreements. If I'm going too quick, by the way, raise your hand. Sometimes the screen doesn't come through. But I'm in subpart 254, trade agreements. I'm going to look at an exception. Trade agreements does not apply acquisition set aside for small businesses you do you do a small business set aside uh, it, there are still uh, reasons why you could you could uh, fulfill that contract through foreign made products but it can't be through a trade agreement so that's an error they found <clears throat> Another one, they said, uh, applications that were below the TAA threshold, below the TAA threshold. That's what a lot of people do, can get confused on. Let's get the report up there. I'm going to look at page 25. Excuse me. Of the report. Trade Agreements Act incorrectly applied. Of the six contracts we reviewed, 49 trade agreement applied to the foreign end products. We found two cases in which this waiver did not apply to the contracts in question. The value of the contracts is one factor. The value of the contract is one determining factor for whether a trade agreement waives the Buy American Act requirements. I'm going to say that's false. I, I've sent a letter email to the 
GAO, but that's a false statement. Um, be interested in what you think. Although the far states additional factors that would affect applicability under the statement. That's pretty, you know, so maybe that's their out qualifier, but they keep saying that, that the threshold, the dollar thresholds on the Trade Agreement Act apply to contracts, acquisitions, in particular acquisitions, and that's not the case. Then they go on to say that the two contracts we found, both from VA, at total dollar values at award pretty low, which were less uh, than any of the thresholds at which the trade agreement waivers of the Buy American Act are applicable. So those are the dollar values there. So let's let's call it 12K was the, was the highest one. So they're saying in those cases, uh, the Trade Agreement Act was a, a erroneously cited as authority for buying the foreign end product. They list the thresholds up here. So it was 12K. So for the foreign vendor to be treated the same as the United States vendor, the dollar threshold on WTO is 180,000. So they were right. GAO is right that 12 is less than, than that. And if I look at 12K, it is lower than any of them. The lowest is Canada at 25,000. So if the acquisition is a, is a, uh, Above twenty five thousand, then the ca Canadian vendors are on the same playing field as the United States vendors. So what's what's the distinction? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to get back to that, but uh, no, I won't. Let's take a look at far. So th I think, with, not I think, when you read through the GAO report, they repeatedly say that the that these dollar thresholds on the Trade Agreement Act apply to contracts, apply to individual acquisitions. And that's, that's not correct. Let's take a look. 25403B. World Trade... Uh, organization, government procurement agreement, and free trade agreements. And he, here's the key concept. If in any 12-month period, recurring or multiple awards for the same type of product or products are anticipated, use the total estimated value of these projected awards, plural, to determine whether the WTO, GPA, or free trade agreement apply. Conversely, do not divide any acquisition with the intent of reducing the estimated value of the acquisition below the dollar threshold, WTO, GPA, or a free trade agreement. See, that's where they get that. I don't think they're, they're communicating that well or they're getting that right. Uh, what was that? Here, these two contracts from both VA had total dollar values of 8,000. You know, who cares? You know, so it's a factor. But what if, you know, what if VA, what if this 11,950 was for, you know, a, a new hospital bed, just take a new high tech hospital bed? And they bought one of them, to, you know, on a one off cases, but in the next, uh, three to six months, they were planning on buying 500. Well, in that case, the according to 25403B3, then they would be correct in specifying uh, the award. We purchased the award from a foreign manufacturer through a free trade, free trade agreement. Why? Because the cumulative spend for that type of product was going to be way over the threshold. So these, these thresholds don't, don't apply to individual awards. They apply, uh, you know, if you, whatever that, that language is, to the same type of product or products in any 12-month period. 
But anyway, here's an example. We can take a look at one that, you know, sure can um, raise an eyebrow, but is not necessarily incorrect. 21,000. Uh, in vitro diagnostic substances bought from Great Britain through a trade agreement. Uh, you know, if they're buying a lot more of those in a 12 month period, that, that's the correct, correct thing to do. All right, pick, uh, what, what else did GAO find? Uh, they picked the wrong exception. Remember those five exceptions, resale, um, IT, commercial IT, uh, non-availability, too much cost, unreasonable cost. And that's the one I'm missing. Resale, IT, unreasonable cost, domestic non-availability, and public interest. So they were just saying that in a con you know they reviewed what was what was uh, designated in FPDS and G and what was in the contract file. And in FPDS and G, they put down unreasonable cost, which is K in the place of manufacture field. They looked in the contract file, and it was actually J, not the domestic availability. So the the CS or CO just simply picked the wrong exception on the drop down. Uh, but here's another one they, they point out. Uh, if you look at page 17 of the report, which is a which is a good check to have. Uh, only you know. I'm going to double check it, but it's got to be, if you put a DOD qualifying country exception, again, those are the, the blanket exception that DOD has made for certain countries. That's okay if DOD has funded the award. But if it's a non-DOD, certainly if it's a non-DOD funded and a non-DOD contracted award, you can't put it. That's not applicable. Um, For example, we reviewed 8.3 million DHS contract for engines manufactured in Germany that were recorded as a DOD qualifying country exception in FPDS and G, although this exception is not available to civilian agencies. So DHS can't, can't claim that exception. And here would be, here would be an example. Low, low spend Coast Guard, that's a, that's a DHS agency, except in time of war. Uh, Canada, and they put qualifying country DOD only. They can't do that. The other thing GAO found in terms of specific errors, uh, they picked the wrong country. So uh, DHS designated aircraft parts as being from the USA. So when they looked in the contract file, it actually was an Italian product. So those are some specific examples. Um, yeah, you can't, don't, don't do two eight T, don't use trade agreement authority. If it's a small business set aside, you gotta look to a US vendor for that, unless you wanna pick an exception. Um, check those thresholds. Uh, if you're gonna do the DOD exception, you gotta be DOD funded. And it's a simple oversight on some of those. Pick the long, pick the long exception on the drop down. Uh, actually, wasn't a U.S. product. What else did they find? GAO. What they would like to do in FPDS and G is if the award was not competed because it was under the micro purchase threshold, then just gray out the place of manufacture field. It's not applicable, and it's a tiny amount of spend. But if you look at this one here, FBI, Treasury. So if I come down to the competition section, it was less than a, a micro purchase threshold. But you know, the person still put place of manufacture out, outside the US. What the GAO report is suggesting is don't don't make the CLCS fill this out, just ghost it out. It's a tiny amount of spend and the place of manufacture 
is not applicable on, on the NPT buys. So that's a change that they are recommending in FPDSG. Another thing they say is, what if the spend? Uh, JO said, you know, what, what if this? What if the acquisition was for included both USA and foreign products? You know, the answer is you've got to go with the preponderance of the spend, but uh, GAO uh, thought uh, being able to break that out somehow would be helpful. Seems like more more complexity in the reporting, but that's something they raised the possibility of doing. Uh, here's one. Uh, if you obligate money on an IDV, IDC, GWAC, FSS, BOA, BPA, you know, that does happen you still can't designate the place of manufacture. It's ghosted out. SPDS and G will not let you enter a field. So here's an obligation for 31 million, and it's an IDC, type of indefinite delivery vehicle, of course. Uh, the vendor is the United Kingdom, is in the United Kingdom, and it, um, it's certain to be manufactured in the United Kingdom, why? because the domestic or foreign entity is foreign owned business, not incorporated in the U S it's for drugs. So they're buying drugs uh, from the United kingdom, manufactured in the United kingdom, uh, but they can't fill out the uh, place of manufacture, which is, uh, I can't find where it is. Hmm. Or it's just, maybe it's just not even a field. It's got to be in here somewhere. But I saw that. Well, I guess they don't even display it on the IDV. Where would it be? Let's see if I got to go back to here. I found it back here. So the place of manufacturer is in the product or service information. And on an IDV, they just don't even list it. So it's just blank, not even shown. You cannot pick it. So on that one there, uh, they were out, HHS was obligating money on the, on the IDV uh, quite a bit, and they couldn't designate uh, where the product was manufactured. FPDS and G does not let them. Uh, that's another thing GAO recommend, recommends changing. Yeah, they talk about lack of training. I don't know if, uh, if that's been your experience. Uh, HHS, uh, VA in particular, are two they singled out as uh, doing some more robust training, uh, some at department level training on um, the Buy American Act. It's pretty pretty I would, based on my experience, a more complex topic. Now, one of the things people have been doing, uh, I forgot, I think this was DOD, they have a tool that just step-by-step, -step, a document that walks COs through the process of uh, determining whether the Buy American Act applies. So some job aids. Some departments are doing it, some aren't. That would be a pretty handy one to have, particularly if it was online. Uh, we already went through that. They erroneously, you know, erroneously picking a TA, TAA wa waiver instead of the correct BAA exception. But when you do that, when you when you designate that it was a TAA waiver and, and not a BAA exception, so they look, yeah, we had to buy it from Israel uh, through the trade agreement. Now, I, I say had to, but, you know, we, we treat the Israeli vendors the same as the U.S. vendors. I think the threshold there is 50,000. So that's why that, that was our authority for using that vendor. Uh, if instead the actual reason was domestic non-availability, uh, that circumvents uh, higher level reviews and written determinations. They found that in some of their reviews of the uh, contracts. And in some cases, they it was just wrong. The, oh, this one, yeah. The vendors certified their products were domestic end products, although they actually were, were foreign. So it's a little, mis, a little uh, mix up on the vendor part. 
Now, uh, some of you may know better, uh, not may, some of you do know better than I, the uh, certification of uh, where the products are made is you can do a blanket one, you being the vendor can do a blanket one in SAM, and then when you do the solicitation, you can put a clause in there that also requires the vendor to certify where they're coming from. So two places where they, you can pull that information. All right, uh, we're wrapping it up here, coming to an hour. Hey, any questions so far, comments? I'd love to hear your own personal experience. If you wanted to share some with the group, that would be great. All right, we, uh, Fed Data Check, we, as you know, uh, you're with us. Uh, if you're on, on this webinar, you, uh, your agency is a subscriber to Fed Data Check, where we review. Uh, all the transactions and, and among other things, uh, look for uh, violations of the Buy American Act through our data checks 125 and 126. So uh, here's one where we flagged it uh, as erroneously citing a trade agreement waiver, but it was below the threshold. So it's 38,000. Place of manufacture was Japan. Trade agreements. And now, if you go back and look at that GAO report, I think Japan would be WTO. Let's find them. Come on, where are they? Here we go. WTO, Japan. So the threshold there is 180. But remember, I said that. Uh, you can't look at, for those thresholds, you can't look at awards in isolation. It's the same type of product over a 12-month period. But the issue was, in our Fed Data Check report, we do report the total spend by product service code and NAICS code for that country. And it was well below the 180. So we, we sum it up for product service code and NAICS code for the department. And uh, in this case, for NIST, um, that spend was well below 180, so we don't see that as being TAA eligible. Again, that that a little bit counterintuitive to some people. It's if the if the award is too low, if it's under the threshold, then you're obligated uh, to use a uh, a United States vendor. If it's above it, then the Japan vendors can be treated the same as the U.S. vendor, assuming. Well, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it again. Now, here's one here. If you look at this, at this one, this is another NIST award, very low amount, 12,000, so way under any trade agreement, uh, trade act, trade agreements act threshold. Laboratory equipment, yeah, NIST. Seems like something like NIST would buy. Manufactured in Japan, manufactured outside trade agreements. Okay, well, again, if you're just looking at this award in isolation, you'd say, why? Well, you, you can't do that. You, you had to buy that from a U.S. vendor. But said data check, again, we do sum up the spend uh, for commerce for that product service code and NAICS code and it was way above the threshold. So that one's probably okay. That, that, that legitimately, legitimately and should have had a trade agreement authority and the Japan vendor was entitled, a Japanese vendor was entitled to be treated the same as a, as a domestic vendor because of the, the 12 months spend uh, for that type of product. All right, what else do we look for? Here's some, Here's some ones that, again, the GAO mentioned report. Remember they said the GAO, we went through that earlier, that if it's a small business set aside, you can't cite trade agreement authority as a justification for awarding a contract to a vendor who's going to fulfill the contract in foreign-made products. So th this comes up a lot. And, again, the GAO report, as we saw, specifically referenced it, and it is something that the uh, – President Trump and the executive order 
and that James Brady guy also emphasized in their announcements. So this is not much money, 4,000 bucks, but it's a Veterans Affairs. This was specifically addressed in the GAO report. German uh, place of manufacture, manufactured outside US trade agreements. Okay, you're under the threshold, but that here's the problem. It was an SDVO set aside. Yeah, that is that's just flatly inconsistent. You can't do that. Twenty five four oh one. Twenty five. Trade agreements exceptions. Trade agreements do not apply to set asides for small businesses. Here's another one. Forty thousand dollars by uh, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol protection CBP. Ammunition from Great Britain, can't do it. You can buy it from Great Britain, but you can't, you can't, you can't cite trade agreement authority. Not allowed. Hey, Brian, I, if you have a question. Brian, if you have a question. Yep. No, I'm good. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, you know, why is that? Trade agreements don't apply to acquisition of arms, ammunition, or war materials. Or, you know, kind of, kind of a little bit of common sense on that one. I'm not saying, you know, you know, I'm not the one uh, under pressure to do a lot of this stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, if war breaks out, you don't want to be getting your ammunition from Great Britain, <clears throat> which is the, I'm sure, the logic behind that. So can't do that. That's another thing we check for. And if we see that, we flag it and send the CO an email uh, the following day. Here's one. Uh, acquisitions uh, 2541A5. We'll take a look at this. In short, you can't you can't use simp not compete an award using simplified acquisition procedures and then cite trade agreement authority for selecting a uh, for uh, fulfilling the contract through products uh, from a foreign vendor. So the, the issue here is, is uh, so you got your, we bought it from Italy. That's where the product was made. Now, this is an interesting one. Look at that right there. But anyway, we brought it from Italy, manufactured outside U.S. trade agreement, not competed under SAP. That's, that's the problem. You could not compete it, but you can't use simplified acquisition procedures. It's not competed under SAP and the uh, manufacturer outside the U.S. trade agreement. That's, that's in conflict per 25401A5, please. 25401A5. Now, this is one we do see and what we, we reviewed in another Buy American Act. Anyone have an idea what they, what they should have picked here? Let's, let's review the exceptions. And then we're, and then this, this is, we're almost done here. So if you look at the exceptions, data dictionary exceptions, so they, they picked, I bought this uh, office automation equipment, right? Whatever that was from Italy. And I, I didn't compete it. Uh, not competed through SAP. There was something else they could have picked that would have been okay. So the five exceptions are resale, trade agreements. No, excuse me, that's not an exception, that's a waiver. Resale is one. Manufactured outside U.S. commercial IT. Got a blanket exception on that. By, by that, I mean um, you can treat the foreign vendor the same as the U.S. vendor. It's for commercial IT. That's exception two. We're talking about exception three. Another one is public interest. 
So I got three so far. Domestic non-availability, four, and reasonable cost. So on that one, what they should have done is just put H. So what would not be inconsistent, which would be a, a legitimate entry, is flip that to H. So I bought office automation system equipment. That sounds like commercial IT to me. Uh, yep, it was from Italy. They, they were the best vendor. Well, why didn't you use an American vendor? I did not compete it under SAP. I had justification for that, pretty low spend. Well, what's your justification for doing that? Why didn't you, you know, following uh, whatever that guy's name was, Brady, and some of these others who's saying that the these exceptions and waivers are being abused greatly, you know, what could you have done? I flip that to commercial IT. That would be perfectly consistent with the FAR. Okay. In review, last slide. Uh, I think I got a couple good general tips and I would like to get your comments on this. Uh, we'll get one comment before we wrap up here. BAA is a hot topic. It's coming out a lot. GAO just did it. But you know, it is tied to a small amount of spend, 0.6% if you look at uh, exceptions and the Trade Agreement Act waiver. And that's 0.6% of products. It's not even counting even lower if you throw in services. But, you know, $1.25 billion, so I'm not going to minimize it, but it's not a lot. So here's my tips that I came up with that I, th I think would be useful to think about when you're going through designating the 9-H field and you, GAO doesn't flag your award as a problem. General tip number one. If the obligated amount is less than the SAT, and if you designated in the 9-H uh, place of manufacturer field, G, manufactured outside the U.S. trade agreements, in the place of manufacturer field, double check. So if you got a low dollar value award, and you're designated and you bought that through trade agreement authority, just, just uh, take another 10 minutes and think about whether you uh, whether the dollar threshold test is actually being met. Uh, typically, you know, if you're going to be under the SAT, you're, you certainly might might be uh, under one of those trade agreement trade agreement act thresholds. So then, what you're saying is, well, yes, I'm under on I'm under the threshold on this acquisition, but we have more planned or we had already done some in the previous 12 months that puts us above the threshold. But that should, that should be a warning flag, you know, trade agreements and under the SAT. General tip number two, don't put manufactured outside the U.S. trade agreements. To, don't cite that authority if you use the small business set aside. Don't, don't have the contract uh, fulfill its products through a foreign vendor if it's for war materials, arms or ammunition. And if you did not compete it using SAP. So those are the three big ones we see. Trade agreement authority com combined with a small business set aside or buying ammunition or not competed award using SAP. Those are the. Okay. All right. What, uh, what do you think of my general tips there? Who's got a thought or based on your experience, what would you say about those tips? Anyone? All right. Well, I guess they're good tips. Uh, you know, the, 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 the webinar, webinar is over. If you haven't heard about what, what we're all about, you're free to stay on. Uh, but uh, I'm Bob Hartford, EP Business Intelligence Products with Fed, uh, Potomac Wave. Fed Data Check is our product. We're on YouTube. So if you type in Fed Data Check, we got a channel and a bunch of videos up there that describe what we're all about. We're headquartered in Alexandria, mostly a women-owned small business. Some makes codes we are, some we aren't. A lot of different vehicles available that we work under. 
But data check does more than just far data quality, which was our emphasis today. We uh, do, uh, right, let's take increasing competition rates. Uh, we had a request from one of our subscribers to say, hey, look, anytime the IDV was competed, but they coded the order of call as not competed, send me an alert. So that's one of the things we can do. If you got a low competition rate, uh, it can well be. You can pick up another five percentage points simply by double checking your BPA calls and orders that they're coded such that uh, you're getting credit where credit is due. And he did make a mistake such that is erroneously counted as a not competed award. That's all I got. Pooja, any comments? Ted Ned? Anyone? I don't have All right. I don't all right. This is a good presentation, Bob. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, I hope hope it helped. Uh, and I'll uh, send you the GAO report and the uh, PowerPoint deck tomorrow. And I appreciate you attending. Uh, let's see, Daniel, did you have a question or? No. All right. Hey, no, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to uh, say I'm working on one now, and this is going to be really helpful for me. All right. Very good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you. Bye. Thank you.